Hello everyone, I'm Major General Tom Carden. I'm the Adjutant General for the Georgia National Guard. I want to thank and congratulate Colonel John Till and his team of subject matter experts that developed our infection control teams. Under Colonel Till's leadership, we developed and deployed our first infection control team on the 31st of March, 2020. Since then, we've scaled that mission set to more than 70 infection control teams. As of today, about 47% of the deaths to COVID-19 have occurred in one of Georgia's 790 long-term care facilities. Under the leadership of Brigadier General Randall Simmons and Command Sergeant Major Jeff Logan, Joint Task Force Georgia's infection control teams have absolutely bent the odds in favor of survival among our most vulnerable citizens that live in one of Georgia's long-term care facilities. I couldn't be more proud or more thankful for what our leaders have done to make Georgia's residents safer during our COVID-19 response. For this short training video, I want to cover just a few things for you. Uh, we're going to do pre-coordination uh, information and what you need to do before you get on site. And then once you get on site, what do you need to do with administrative people or the maintenance people that, that are at the building? We'll cover a little bit about uh, personal protective equipment. And the three tasks involved in disinfecting, it's fogging, spraying, and mopping. And then we'll also go over the individual decontamination of the people that are actually doing the the disinfecting for you when they get out of the building what you need to do for them. Before you start putting together your infection control teams, make sure you go to the OSHA's website and find out what the most recent guidelines are for respirator wear when you're dealing with a coronavirus. When you get on site, check to see if you can put the fire alarm system into the test mode. If you can't, you need to call the administrative number through the fire department and let them know you're getting ready to fog the building. And before you do that, you want to go to the smoke detectors with some Glad press and seal and a little broom and just cover the, the sensors on the smoke detector. When you're done with all the process and the, the fog has, has uh, died down, you can go back make sure the same person that put the, the plastic up over the smoke detectors is the same one that takes it out. All right, so now let's look at some of the PPE that we use on our infection control teams. Uh, first of all, we'll start with the mask. Uh, the N95 mask is, is preferred, especially if you don't have the military version of the issue mask, the M50 mask or another type. Uh, N95 uh, masks are, uh, have been hard to come by during the coronavirus uh, pandemic, but now uh, all of our ICTs are capable of getting these things. So. Uh, a couple different versions. The N95 mask um, has two straps and a nose clamp to be able to seal around the nose better. Uh, the N99 mask has a exhalation valve on it. Also has a rubber gasket on the inside. And then probably rarely we use these. I just put it out there because it's one that I had in my stock. But uh, if you're going to use a, a half face respirator type mask, make sure you have the right filters in it. So one of the issues we have with the N95 mask is, is preserving them as well as with the Tyvek suit. So we've come up with different techniques to preserve these. We've had to MacGyver a way to figure out how to preserve your mask. One is you write your, write your name on the mask and then when you're finished at the end of the day and you've disinfected it, you place the mask inside a cardboard box. It has to be cardboard box, not plastic. And then pull the straps over the top to the outside of the box without touching the inside of the mask and then close the mask up and you've got a mask that will last forever. Thank you very much. The next thing you need is, is uh, goggles. Goggles come in different varieties, preferably the ones that seal all the way to your face. If you get them like this, they'll seal to your face and if you wear glasses they'll cover over the glasses. If you don't have ones that seal completely use the standard safety glasses and they'll go over your, your uh, 
prescription glasses as well. And then lastly, if you don't have any of those, at least wear some nice uh, safety gloss, uh, glasses. Another option that I don't have displayed here is the, uh, the, the full face shield that goes around your head here and it has a shield that comes down. Uh, those are great as well. So for gloves, I want to show you these. This is what not to wear. Do not wear any kind of cloth gloves or issue gloves, leather, or anything like that. You're going to want to use uh, disposable gloves or reusable uh, rubber gloves, similar to kitchen gloves. Next is a Tyvek suit. There's, there's several Tyvek suits out there. You're definitely going to want one that ha is coated. If you have one that's coated, you can use an individual decontamination process that we'll show you in just a second. You can spray it down, let it air dry, and you can reuse it. Some of the, some of the Tyvek suits, the ones that we prefer, have booties already built onto them. And all of them that we use have the hoods. If you don't have the booties on the ones that you order, then make sure you order booties separately. So on these Tyvek suits, if you have a tear in them anywhere, just use standard duct tape to cover the tear and it'll be fine. It'll cover it long enough for you to complete your job and then you get another, another suit later. I'll show you a technique in just a second where if you have gaps on your wrist or around your neck, then you can use tape to, to make sure that your skin is not exposed as you go through the process. Okay, Always have a first aid kit on hand if you're doing it in a, in a remote area that, that you're not familiar with. Carry a portable first aid kit. When you're donning the PPE, get some uh, assistance. A buddy system works great in putting the Tyvek suit on. And for these purposes, we went ahead and put uh, the N95 mask on because of social distancing while we're doing this video. The next thing you're going to do is put the, your gloves on, your nitrile gloves, and we do these in two layers. The reason you do that is because if you have two layers on, you can prick one of them on the outside and you'll still have protection underneath. So the best technique is spray the hand with the solution you have so that the second glove will slide on easy. And if you damage that outer glove, it's easy to take off. Get both gloves on, both pair of gloves. And then once you get the gloves on, use your buddy to make sure that there's no skin exposed between your gloves and the end of your sleeves. If, if your long arms are too long, uh, stretching your arms out may cause the sleeves to ride up. So you can do one or two things. You can put the gloves over the outside, or you can take the sleeve, put it over the outside of the glove, and then use uh, painter's tape or, or duct tape or masking tape to make sure that the sleeve does not separate from the glove. Next, you want to pull up your, uh, your hood over the top of your head, and in this case, we're going to use the goggles to put over the face, and with your buddy, help to reduce the, the amount of exposed skin that you have. A couple techniques is to tuck it underneath the goggles, that's why we use that, and then use the painter's tape to seal the bottom of the neck so there's no exposed skin. And from there, you're ready to go to work. When you're selecting the foggers to use, make sure you go with a high quality professional grade fogger. A fogger is considered to be able to put out a, a mist or the fog of 50 microns or less. Anything more than that is either a mist or a spray and that's not going to get uh, the saturation that you need in the air and then the nooks and crannies that you're trying to get to. Fogging is much better for you than spraying and trying to wipe everything because we miss a lot of places that we can't uh, when we're trying to just wipe. So <clears throat> use a quality grade professional fogger for all of them that I've seen, there's two switches on it. The first switch is the power, and when you flip the power on, it just blows air through the hose. To get the solution to come out, there's some kind of valve on each one of the nozzles, and you can adjust the amount of fog that comes out. So depending on what you're trying to fog, a common area uh, that has just furniture or anything like that, then you can put more fog. But if you're in an area that there's no people in and you have 
a lot of computer systems and stuff, you may not want to fog as much. So you can just reduce the amount of solution that's coming out by controlling the valve here. So to, re to turn it off, you want to turn the valve off first, let the machine continue to blow for a few seconds, and that'll get rid of any of the residual solution that you have in the valve and it'll prolong the life of your fogger. And then turn the power off. The solutions that we use, uh, we use for a, ver for a very specific reason. We did some research trying to find solutions that would take care of the mold problems that we have in a lot of our buildings and vehicles. Sandia Laboratory was commissioned by the Department of the Interior many years ago. Uh, they put together this product. You can go online and look it up. Uh, also known as DF100 or DF200, uh, the later version of it. Air Armor Decon Pro is a two-part solution. Uh, part A and a part B, you just have to mix them one-to-one, -one, regardless of the amount that you mix, whether you put it in a small spray bottle or you put it in a larger fogger, it's still one-to-one. -one. When you're disinfecting an area where people are, spray the solution on a rag and just wipe down commonly touched areas and clean them that way. You don't want to fog where people don't have the opportunity to get up and leave their office or if it's a long-term care facility or a nursing home then you can't move them out of their rooms. Just use a, a application of spraying the solution and wiping all those commonly touched areas to include light switches, doorknobs, faucets, handles, and everything else. When you put your solution into a bottle, make sure that you label what you put in that bottle. If you're fogging an area that has a hard surface floor, whether it's tile, uh, ceramic, or uh, marble, or wood, go back in and make sure that the floor is not slippery based on the residue from your fogging solution. We have to go in with uh, a, a degreaser. We like to use the ones that say green on them because EPA, we, we like to keep EPA happy. So if you're doing a small area, spray the solution down and just take a Swiffer type product, put a standard uh, towel underneath it and just smear it until you have good coverage. If you're doing a large area like a, a big hallway or quarter or a cafeteria, put concentrate into a mop bucket according to the manufacturer's specifications. This particular one we use half a uh, bucket of water and about eight ounces of the of the degreaser and just do it like a standard mop uh, sequence and you'll get rid of all the slippery residue from whatever solution you're using. Make sure you go back in and check to see if it's slippery before you depart the area because you don't want to create another hazard by uh, having a slick floor and somebody else goes in from a staffer or even the tenant and slips down, we just created a, a bigger problem. The first thing you're going to do is uh, pick up your fog machine, go to the far end of the room and work your way backwards so that you'll have a way to come out. And it's always best to have a buddy to, to control your cord so don't, it doesn't become a trip hazard for you. All right, he'll start on the far end. One of the things he's going to do is point at the commonly touched areas, like the board over there. You know people are writing on the whiteboard, the handles on the chairs, the doorknobs, the doors, uh, any other switches like the light switches, uh, remote controls. If you have those around, uh, you're going to want to hit all those. And you can adjust the amount of fog as necessary. In here, uh, you won't need a whole lot, but you can go ahead, turn the power on, and then adjust the nozzle. Going from one side to the next, backing your way out. Make sure you don't trip over the cord at the same time. And the fog is hitting down on the chairs where the people sitting on the tables. And he's going to work his way around this way. And once he gets there, he'll point toward the door and get the doorknob. And then, and then turn the knob off. 
and then turn the power off. When you're finished with the operation inside, you have to bring all your team members out and do a, a individual decontamination process. Using the same solution you just used inside, you want the buddy to come up, you have the individual stand facing into the wind, palms facing forward, start from left to right and then top to bottom, down one leg and down the other leg, have this individual turn around, palms facing away now, start from left and right or right to left, just stay consistent from the top all the way down to the bottom and you don't want the fogger, uh, the spray bottle to saturate the suit so stay far enough away then you pick up one foot and point backwards and they can spray the bottom of that one and then pick up the other foot spray that one and once you've been sprayed you need to move off to a holding area for three to five minutes to make sure the disinfectant has the chance to do its job once the three to five minutes is up you'll get your assistant or attendant to help you take off your goggles then unzip your Tyvek suit from the front. Have the soldier turn around or the person turn around. Remove the hood and then have the person bend up forward at the waist, stick your arms back to the rear and you can pull the sleeves out and over just trying to touch the outside of the suit at any time. At that point you want to give them something to hold on to so they don't trip. You can grab a broom or a cone or anything else and just have them hold on to it while you help them take their boots off. After the boots have been taken off, the attendant can lay the suit out while, while the other person who just came out of the suit takes his gloves off. The outer set of gloves can come off now, throw them in the trash bag, and once that's done, you can take your mask off and secure it properly. In this case, it doesn't have the, the box to put it in, so you can either put it in a paper bag or a box. So you still do not want to touch the inside of the mask. While you're there, go ahead and spray the outside of the mask with a solution one more time and then put it away to dry. At that point, you can get rid of the, the inner gloves and toss them in the trash. From there, you want to have uh, wipes available so that any skin that was exposed at any time can be wiped down, wiped down your hands. You, the chemical is uh, non-toxic, but it will leave a film. And uh, to some folks, it's, since it's a uh, uh, a hydrogen peroxide base. It can be an irritant to some skin types, but it's always good to get all that off your skin before you move on to your next mission. I think it worked. I just put the final touches on uh, this uh, shop vac, which I've managed to turn into a homemade fogger by wiring the sump pump down in the tank up to the shop vac switch right here. So, I want to start by saying I'm so proud of this country and the way everyone is adapting to necessary changes to ensure all of our safety and welfare, from the men and women on the front lines in the health and medical fields, to law enforcement, to firefighters and first responders, to the grocery store staff, mechanics, restaurant staff, and trash collectors. And especially our very own National Guard men and women who have expanded their normal mission capacity to many non-standard, unconventional tasks to help alleviate pain and suffering for our most vulnerable population in nursing homes and long-term care facilities. As Major General Cardin of the Georgia National Guard would say, they have bent the odds toward victory. I'm also proud of the families and communities who have had to learn and apply a new phrase, shelter in place. Otherwise, we would be much worse off than we are now. As we get closer to the return to work phase, please continue to look after one another and keep each other safe by maintaining proper social distancing until this crisis is over. God bless you all and God bless America.